Hi, I'm Alex. I'm an ex-IELTS examiner and one of the expert IELTS teachers here at e2language.com. Here at e2language, our mission is to help you pass your English language test. And we know that IELTS writing is a big hurdle. So today I want to show you how an examiner marks your writing. That is, I'm going to show you exactly how the marking criteria work. I know it looks like a super complicated document, but I'm only going to show you the important parts. So how does it work? First of all, I should mention this is the public version of the Writing Task 2 band descriptors. Everything you need to know is on here and you can find this via the link below. Now there are four criteria here. Task response, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, and grammatical range and accuracy. And the band scores are on the left. Expert user is up the top, band nine, and band zero is down the bottom for people who didn't turn up or who wrote a memorized essay. Most people aiming around here, band seven and band eight. Now the examiner actually gives you four scores, one for each of the criterion, and your total score is worked out from them. So how do you get your score? Well, let's say you get seven, 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 seven from the examiner, then congratulations. That, of course, is a band seven essay. However, if you miss one and get, let's say, band six in grammatical range and accuracy, even though you've got three sevens, this will come to band 6.5 for this one. You can counter this by scoring band eight somewhere else. So what does this mean for you as a candidate? How can you be sure that you're not going to drop below band seven? Well, of course, we need to know what's in the band seven criteria, but you also need to look at band six and band five and even band three, because that's where the reasons for band six and band 6.5 exist. Let's start with criterion one, task response, which is here on the left. If you look at the band seven requirements, you can see three dot points. And the first one says addresses all parts of the task. Now, if you have a question like this, nowadays people use social media to keep up with the news. Why do they do this? Is it a positive or negative trend? You'll see that there are two questions. Why do they do this? Is it a positive or negative trend? You're more likely to be down here if you answer just one question addresses the task only partially. So that's a simple one. There are two questions, answer both. The second question that we just saw asked, is it a positive or a negative development? Now this brings us to the second dot point, presents a clear position throughout the response. Very important word there is throughout, throughout the response. Basically, this means that you are giving an opinion from top to bottom in your essay. Now let's say you don't want to give an opinion or your opinion is not clear to the examiner. This is catastrophic. We're down here at band three, does not express a clear position. So your work could be beautifully written, full of rich vocabulary and ideas. But if I get to the end and I don't know what you think, you're going to score band three. So address all parts of the task, clear opinion throughout, and then presents, extends, supports main ideas. This is the body of your essay. Whenever you give an idea or make a point, you need to present it, extend it, support it. If you don't, you'll be down here at six. Presents relevant main ideas, but inadequately developed or unclear. Or five, limited ideas that are not sufficiently developed or have irrelevant detail. This is where an expert IELTS teacher can really help you. So make sure that you book your tutorial if you're a subscriber and submit your work for assessment so that we can help you. Criterion two is coherence and cohesion. And this is all about paragraphing, linking and flow. There are three dot points here. Logically organizes information and idea, clear progression, uses a range of cohesive devices, clear central topic within each paragraph. If you've done any IELTS prep, you would know all of this, but you could still be scoring 6.5 or 6. Why is that? Well, let me show you. 
Here at band six, the second dot point says, uses cohesive devices effectively, but cohesion within and or between sentences may be faulty or mechanical. Faulty or mechanical. Again, these are very important words. Let me show you what they mean. Faulty cohesion. Here's an example. Some people like to get their news from social media. While there are some benefits, but this is not always a good idea. Faulty cohesion. This is really, it's a grammatical problem, but there's a linking word here, while, linking word, but, and they are used incorrectly. So this is classic band six faulty linking. The other one was mechanical, mechanical cohesion. Here's an example. Firstly, blah, blah, blah. Secondly, blah, blah, blah. Finally, blah, blah, blah. Therefore, blah, blah, blah. Moreover, blah, blah, blah. It's totally fine. It's not wrong, but it's pretty boring and it's mechanical. The linkers are at the start of the sentence and they're not very imaginative. If you've come to our live classes, you'll know that we have a few tricks to avoid having this mechanical cohesion, but you'll probably recognize that you're guilty of this in your own writing. It's very common. So beware of faulty and mechanical linking. Another big reason why you might lose points is because of referencing. Band six says that you may not always use referencing clearly or appropriately. And referencing is words like uh, it, they, them, this, these. Using them correctly means knowing your countable and uncountables and editing carefully. So do you know when to use the word this and when to use the word these? If not, you could be using your references incorrectly. And the more serious issue is here in band five, may be repetitive because of lack of referencing and substitution. Let me show you an example of this. These days, it is quite difficult to avoid advertisements. Some people believe that advertisements make life better, whereas other people feel advertisements make life worse. Despite the negative aspects of advertisements, I feel that life is better with advertisements. Grammatically, this is fine. However, you can notice the repetition. This writer has used the word advertisements five times in just three sentences. This is way too many. This is a classic band five, repetitive because of lack of referencing and substitution. Of course, you have to repeat vocabulary, but be careful with repeating the same word more than once per sentence and definitely not more than three times per paragraph. One final point on this criterion is about paragraphing. Now, Ben Six says, uses paragraphing, but not always logically. Well, what is a logical paragraph, you ask? This. This is logical paragraphing. The words here are just nonsense, so don't worry about them. For the moment, I'm just talking about the visual aspect. You can clearly see here the introduction, two body paragraphs, and the conclusion. Now compare that to this essay, immediately this poor student can say goodbye to IELTS 7. Why is there one sentence sitting all alone here? And what's this weird gap in the middle of this paragraph? What's this huge block of text at the end? Where is the conclusion? This is illogical paragraphing. Paper-based IELTS, same thing. Bye-bye band seven. But the good news is that is super easy to avoid. Just learn the E2 structure, look at our samples, and it's super simple. In terms of the content, it's a little more difficult, but again, learn the E2 structure and apply it to your writing. Criterion three is lexical resource. This is vocabulary. There are two factors at play here. The first one is range. Band seven says uses a sufficient range uses less common lexical items. And the other point is accuracy. So in band seven, you may produce occasional errors in word choice, spelling, or word formation. Let's look at accuracy from band seven to band five. Band seven, occasional errors. Band six, some errors, and they do not impede communication. Band five, noticeable errors that cause some difficulty for the reader. So band seven, a few errors. 
Band six, quite a lot of errors, but I understand everything. Band five, a lot of errors, and in some places, I can't follow because of those errors. The final criterion has much the same approach, grammatical range and accuracy. Again here, an examiner is looking for a variety of complex structures in band seven, wide range in band eight and nine, but here is the kicker. In band seven, second dot point, frequent error-free sentences. If you've ever submitted your work for assessment or for feedback, have a look at how many sentences you have which are absolutely perfect, where the teacher hasn't made any comment or any changes. Frequent error-free sentences are actually fairly rare. You need to be perfect in a lot of sentences. You need to edit really, really rigorously. So how many errors can you make? Well, band eight says the majority of sentences are error-free. So for band seven, you need to be pretty close to 50%, let's say. Now remember the vocab criterion, grammar works in much the same way. Band seven, frequent error-free sentences. Band six, make some errors and they rarely reduce communication. Band five, frequent errors that cause some difficulty. Let's see this in action here. Look at this first paragraph. In conclusion, to some extent, advertising does have a role to play in the economy and can provide useful information to the buying public. There's a spelling error in there, but otherwise it's pretty much perfect. This one, in conclusion, to some extent, advertisement does has a role to play in the economy and can providing useful information to the buying public. I can see lots of errors here, but I can still understand what the writer is trying to say. In conclusion, to some extent, advertisements does have a role for play economics and can to pervade us full information to the busy publi. Here, I'm having trouble understanding. So this is a good example of a band seven, band six, and band five level of writing. So let me simplify everything, sum it all up. To score band seven up in task response, you need to answer all parts of the question, extend, support your ideas, give a clear position throughout. Coherence, cohesion, use referencing, use substitution, beware of faulty and mechanical linking, and paragraph logically. For vocab and grammar, just two points, wide range, minimize your errors. It all sounds very simple, I know, but it can be difficult to analyze your own writing critically. So if you get in touch with us here at E2 Language, you can book a tutorial with me or one of the other IELTS teachers, and we'll go through your writing with you step by step, sentence by sentence, and point out to you where you might be making errors, and more importantly, show you how to fix them up so that on test day, you are scoring band seven. So check us out at e2language.com, we're 100% online. You can submit speaking and writing for feedback, book your tutorials, come along to our daily live group classes, access our course and heaps more. Catch you soon.